Hey everybody, welcome to day 10 of our 30 days toward creating a family ministry plan for your church. Well, we're a third of the way done and I'm sure you're doing an awesome, awesome job. Just stick with us. You're gonna find this transformational for your church as well as for families within your church. Uh, Today, again, we're with Ron Hunter, the author of The DNA of D6. And I'd love to share a little bit more about what other people are saying about the book. Uh, Dr. Steve Vandegrift of Liberty University, he said, D6 Ministries hardwiring is not about the next generation. It's about every generation. And I think that sums it up perfectly and leads us into uh, Today 10 really well. So in earlier sessions, Ron, you mentioned Mickey Mouse. And I would just love to start this session off by saying, if Mickey Mouse is part of the DNA, how does he fit into family-based ministry? Well, first of all, Mickey Mouse is just really cool. But Stuart Cummings Bond wrote in the late 80s about a one-eared Mickey Mouse that it was very prophetic. He said, we have the church right here. And everything happens typically within that church. But when we started hiring youth pastors, we hired really good ones and said, you get just far enough away, get your own room, get your own furniture, paint it the way you want to, have your own music. And they were just on the outside of that circle, but touching. And so it creates this bigger circle, the church, and a smaller circle attached to the church that looks a lot like the one-eared Mickey Mouse. And the problem with that is it created silos. Well, that's a concept we borrowed from McDonald's, Ray Kroc, this idea of let's hire an expert or teach somebody to be really good at doing the same thing, making burgers. Well, Ray Kroc learned that principle from Henry Ford, making automobiles, and he analyzed the assembly line to speed up the process of manufacturing cars. And Henry Ford learned that from Adam Smith, Wealth of Nations in the Division of Labor, where he learned how one person making a pen, P-I-N, could make about 18 to 20 in a day. But 10 men identifying 12 steps in making of a pen could make 48,000 in a day. Now, the church has borrowed that concept. We've hired expert youth ministers. And we say, go get them. That's great, except the parent said, go get them to the youth pastor. And they stepped away. And that's where the problem came in. The parents delegated that responsibility to the church. And as such, they took themselves out of the equation. So the church has to evaluate and go, wow, are we defaulting back to the 1 over 168 model where we're trying to do it only at church because the parents have delegated it? Are we going to risk absolute honesty and say, have we siloed? Have we created these one-eared Mickey Mouses? Because after that pops up senior ministry, then children's ministry, and college ministry, all of them on the outside. Let's risk honesty and ask ourselves, have we really programmed the church to be silos, separating everybody out with unintentional consequences? Then what we need to evaluate as, as church ministers is, Uh, Are we creating silos within our church? You know, is it just youth ministry, children's ministry, college ministry, whatever it is, and they all operate as individual churches? Or do we have an aligned purpose with family-based ministry? And to also evaluate and to see, do we have a lot of parents coming to us and treating us as the experts? And are we receiving that as our calling? And if either one of those are true, then we're a siloed church and we need to correct that. Don't settle for that another day. So spend spend the next uh, day or so just evaluating. Is that our church? Talk about it with your team. Talk about it with your volunteers. And again, don't settle for it one more day.